the supplementary retirement scheme can be a good way to save up for retirement while reducing taxes. However, there are a few problems with it. What? Problems? Yes, you heard that right. So, in this video, I will share what are the problems with SRS that you need to take note of and more importantly, how to avoid them. Before I start, do join my Telegram chat group to discuss anything related to money or ask any questions that you may have. Alright, let's jump right in. First up, a quick intro about SRS so that you don't blur blur later on in the video. The SRS is a Singapore government initiative to encourage Singaporeans to save and invest for old age while at the same time reducing your taxes. This is important because according to surveys, many of you guys haven't even started to plan for your retirement. Then later on, when you don't have enough money for retirement, then how? Lan lan zak tam and blame the government na. But I thought we already have CPF. Isn't that enough for retirement? Well, yes, but no. Because while the CPF gives us a steady pompi pi monthly income during our retirement, assuming we have been quite quite topping up to CPF, it is only enough to cover our basic standard of living. So here's where SRS comes in. With SRS, you are able to contribute up to $15,300 every year as a Singapore resident or up to $35,700 as a foreigner. And after that, you are able to invest the SRS money to further help you grow your retirement funds. Not only that, you are also able to enjoy tax savings. For example, let's say you currently earn 100 k which means you will fall within the 11.5% tax bracket if you decide to contribute up to the maximum cap of $15,300 to your SRS account you are able to save $1,759.50 which is quite a lot of money yeah but before you happy happy go top up to SRS hold up here are three issues that you need to take note of first while you are able to save on taxes by contributing to SRS when you eventually start withdrawing your money from SRS during retirement, you will still be taxed on 50% of the amount that you withdraw. But how is that an issue? So once you start withdrawing, you will need to withdraw everything within 10 years. So let's say you have 800k in SRS. You will be withdrawing 80k every year for 10 years. Then you will be taxed on 50% of it or 40k that you withdraw every year. The problem with that is that there is no guarantee that the Singapore tax rate will remain the same forever. Maybe the tax rate could go up in the future? I don't know. In fact, it was announced during budget 2022 that the personal income tax rate for those earning more than $1 million a year will increase from the current 22% up to 24% in 2024. While we are able to enjoy tax savings when we contribute to SRS today, there's a small chance that we could end up paying more tax in the future. Second issue, while it's nice to save on taxes by contributing to SRS, if you do nothing with the money, it will just sit in the SRS account and earn a CBA tiny 0.05% interest per annum. That's why you need to invest the SRS money in order to get a higher return. However, the problem is that you can only invest your SRS funds in a limited range of investment products, such as Bonds, fixed deposit, safe local stocks such as Singtel or DBS where the risks are low but returns are nothing too fantastic. This means you will not be able to invest in individual US stocks which have the potential to give a much higher return. For example, Apple which has given 340% return over the past 5 years. Third issue, you can only start withdrawing from SRS without any penalty at the statutory retirement age. The statutory retirement age will depend on when you open your SRS account. For example, if you open the account today when it is at 63 years old, you can only start withdrawing at 63 without any penalty. If you open your account before July 2022 when the retirement age was still 62 years old, you'll be able to withdraw from your SRS account without penalty at 62. If you try to withdraw early, there will be a 5% penalty. This won't be an issue for most people as many of us expect to retire in our 60s. But if you are someone who is trying to achieve financial independence retire early, like this lady over here, a lot of your savings are going to be stuck in SRS. And if you try to withdraw early, oh, you get slapped with an early 5% penalty. So those are the three problems with SRS. Wow, like that then how? Don't contribute to SRS Problem solved law. 
not so fast because by not contributing, you are missing out on some fantastic tax savings. Quick pause, did you know that besides Reboot's awesome deals, Reboot also has a useful paper trading feature which allows you to practice your trading skills and test out different strategies. You can find the paper trading feature by going to menu where you'll find paper trade. And here, you'll be able to test out what you have learned without losing any real money. And even if you have lost fake money, no worries, you can reset the net account value back to the full amount and continue with your paper trades. Then once you are ready, you can move on to the real stuff with the knowledge that you have gained from the experience of paper trading. Reboot is currently running a welcome promotion where if you sign up using my link down below, fund any amount and keep the money there for 30 days, you will win 10 free shares each worth 3 US dollars to 500 US dollars. Besides that, there's also a money boot promotion where you can get up to 3,000 US dollars cash vouchers by funding 100,000 US dollars or more and fulfilling the requirements. So if you are interested in trying out WeBoo, do sign up to them using my link down below. With that being said, let's get back to the video. So here's how to contribute to SRS and at the same time, avoid these issues. First issue, potential increase in future test rate. For this, there are two solutions. First, you can try to aim for just having 400k in your SRS account. That's because if you have 400k in your SRS account, you'll be withdrawing 40k per year over 10 years. So only 20k will be considered as chargeable income, which according to this tax chart, you won't have to pay any tax. But of course, that may be easier said than done because it's hard to predict how much returns our investments may give us. Maybe your stocks suddenly go to the moon and you end up with more than $1 million in your account? You never know, right? The second solution is to invest in annuity plans. That's because if your investments are in life annuities, the 10-year withdrawal period does not apply, which also means that you can withdraw a lower amount every year and thus pay lesser or no taxes on your withdrawals. Some examples of life annuity plans are like Manulife Ready Life Income or Great Lifetime Payout to Special where they will give you a lifetime income. Just some examples here. I'm not saying they are the best or what. So go speak to your insurance agent to find out more. Second issue, limited investment choices for SRS, where you can only invest in low risk, low reward investments. However, this may not actually be a bad thing. Instead, it's actually a good thing as it could prevent some people from investing their retirement funds into risky stuff such as crypto and meme stocks. This is also known as the Quay Lapis strategy by Mr. Lu, where when you invest, you start with the safer investments first, such as topping up to your CPF, then invest in index funds, then sector ETFs, then only move on to the riskier investments. In this case, the SRS would form the safer part of your investments, where you invest into local stocks and bonds, or STI ETF, or even through global advisors like the Endowers flagship portfolio, where it holds investments from all around the world. Because remember, the point about investing your retirement funds is not to get rich fast and furious, but rather, it's about getting there safely, which in this case, is making sure that you have enough money for your retirement. Third issue, 5% penalty if you want to make an early withdrawal before your retirement age. But what if I told you that this may not be as big of an issue as you may think? Here's why. One, unlike CPF, your SRS funds are actually very liquid, which is good if you plan to withdraw early. But, but that 5% penalty? So remember, when you contribute to SRS, you will save on taxes, right? Using the earlier example, if you are earning 100K a year and you contribute $15,300 to SRS, this means you will save $1,759.50 in taxes, right? Let's say you stop working at 35, which means you don't have any more income and you want to withdraw the 200k in SRS or 20k a year, you will now have to pay taxes on that 20k, which is basically 0% plus a 5% penalty, which is $1,000. If you compare the $1,759.50 that you save from taxes versus the $1,000 penalty for early withdrawal, you will still have benefited from SRS. Now, of course, whether or not you will benefit from SRS still depends on whether you are still earning an income or not. So let's say if you are still earning 100k when you make an early withdrawal, using the 200k SRS example, your chargeable income is now 100k plus the 20k that you withdraw from SRS, 
which means you'll be in the 11.5% tax bracket. The tax that you'll be paying on your SRS withdrawal will now be $2,300 plus the $1,000 penalty, which means you have paid more for an early withdrawal. So if you plan to contribute to SRS, you still need to take into account when you actually plan to stop working, yeah? Okay, here are my thoughts. While the SRS is good for retirement and tax savings, it also has its risks and downsides. That being said, there are ways to get around these issues as I've just shared. That's why if you are planning to contribute to SRS, you will need to have a long-term plan so that you are able to maximize the benefit that you can get from it. Anyway, that's all for this video. Hopefully, you found it useful. Like, share and subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday.